author. And is it okay to call you a bit of an icon, Dave? Icon, that's it. I like that. Icon. No, I think at my age, the, the icon sounds good. <laughs> Excellent. Icon, icon. As, and as free enterprise say, warrior. As, as long as we don't say in memoriam, you know, we don't want to do any of that sort of I thing. I wouldn't go that far. No way. <laughs> Good to have you with us. I'm Thank so excited. You. A lot Thank of people you. are excited uh, to hear what you have to say. And yes, words matter. And um, Debbie, is there anything you'd like to add? You're in business with Dave. Dave is just she, magical. She, and even, she even admits it occasionally that, that, <laughs> that she and I were business partners until, until finally she took it over herself and now it's boomed since then, so. Well, and I don't know that I've taken it over completely because you're still always by my side and I value it. You're just an incredible... Um, incredible leader. And I know for me, always when I am struggling with words or with presentation on something, somehow I can call you and it's magical what comes out of your mouth. It just spews out and you're, you're good. So thank you for taking the time to do this for our guys. Cause I think it. Yeah. No, happy to. I feel, I feel so connected to you, obviously, Debbie, because of you and our partnership that we began in 2006, right when the market was turning <laughs> the wrong direction. We actually decided in, two, in 2005, she said, she called me and she said, Dave, I think I'm ready to open a market center. And I said, no, you don't want to do that, Debbie. You'll ruin your production. You'll ruin your career. You know, and she went, no, I really think I'm committed to helping other people succeed. And uh, whatever that does to my business, it does to my business. So she said, uh, but I think I want a partner. And I said, oh, no, no, Debbie, don't do partners, please. Partners in real estate don't work. I'm sorry, unless you really know. Well, she said, no, there's somebody that I really particularly would like to be partners with. And I went, well, who? She went, you. I went, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. No, please. But when Debbie asks, the answer is what? It's, it's yes. Otherwise, yes. she the will. Yeah. Is yes. No, no, because... Otherwise, she'll keep asking until the answer is yes. Like so a dog with anyone, a bone. If there's anyone <laughs> who epitomizes loving, caring, persistence, it's my business partner, Debbie. So I really honor what you guys have created. You really have created, you know, I, I get to travel all over the country. This is my 219th Zoominar since last March. Isn't that amazing? 217 wow. Keller Williams Zoominars across the country. And of course, before that, I got a chance to travel. And you know, when it, when it, when an ownership and a team leader and a and a group of ALC members really embrace what Keller Williams stands for, it looks like what you have. It looks like what you have, which is a great facility, a great bunch of resources for agents to use, gr a great broker, great support, great encouragement, and a wonderful, caring as well as supportive culture. And that makes just all the difference in the world. And, you know, we call Keller Williams markets, we call them market centers, but really in your case, it's an energy center, right? It's where people come, mm -hmm. plug in, power up and go after their goals, which is really our commitment to the agents. So one is I want to thank you for what you've created, for bringing me here. You know, this is a wonderful opportunity and, and I'm going to share my screen now. Everyone on this call, I want to, I want to, you know, some of you I know and some of you I don't. And so for those of you who don't, I've been in the real estate business over 30 years. I began with Century 21. I became a, 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 a training director for three states out of Rochester, New York. I became the regional director for Century 21 in New York for three states. They moved me to Dallas to become the divisional president for seven states of Century 21. And I got to watch this little company growing down in Austin. And just as I moved down there, they were reinventing. Gary was meeting with his top ALC and saying, how would we create a company that no one would ever need or want to leave? And that laid all the foundational pieces and all of that. And so I'm always a student of the game I'm in. And so I was in the real estate game and, and as a franchisor, and I looked at that and studied it closely. And I said to myself, you know, if I were inventing a real estate company, it would be like that, not like Century 21, this big corporate brand driven company that was number one in the world at the time. I, it would be like what Gary's building, which is a company truly dedicated to its agents and bringing them all of the training and services they need to be successful, but always putting them first and still being economically wise. And so I watched that. And then the neat thing is, and as Debbie knows, four years later, I got a call from Mo Anderson saying, Gary and I would love to have you on our team because we think you know more about 
real estate franchising than anyone we know. And we love the way you train and talk to agents about the business and about how to be better. So I got a chance to do that. And then of course, Gary and I sat down and began to build Keller Williams University. And the one thing I wanna to say to people on this call is that I wanna honor you because what Gary and I said to each other was the best agents we know are learning based. They're training oriented. They get more training. They go to more classes than any other agent, even though other agents aren't doing the production and say, oh, I don't have time for that. Those top agents say, oh, you don't, you don't not have time for that. You've got to go get trained. This is a difficult business that we do. And so the best agents get training. And for those of you who are paying attention and know that you have a chance now to spend an hour and 15 minutes with an icon, as Patty said, in the, in the industry, a person who's written the best-selling books with Gary and Jay in the, in the history of real estate and has built the training programs. And I want to share with you all I can about this wisdom of you getting more out of your career, because the game is, a, is about um, convincing people to list with you. And, and there's a lot of parts of this. We're going to talk about them now, but the fundamental one is using the power of your words to articulate your value proposition. And I want to, I want to share with you the best that I've learned over my career in the business. So let's start with this. I want you to be a powerful listing agent because listers last. Those who control the listings control the market. Yes, you can get buyers. Yes, you can serve buyers. But if you, if you control the market with your listings, you can also work with buyers and you have listings. We'll talk about that later. But it's one of the things, I mean, I learned from Mike Ferry early in my career. He said, Dave, it's real simple. Here's, here's, here's the real estate business. List a home, tell the world you listed it sell the home, tell the world you sold it, go list another home. He said, that's the game. And the more I thought about that, it sounds simplistic, but it's right. Because when you list a home, you have immediate credibility in that, in that area you're in. And then when you sell the home, you have even more credibility. And if you have more homes that are doing this in a target market, like a neighborhood or an area, you become the one who's known as the listing agent. And one of the top agents I knew up in the, in the central part of the country, she was number one in her MLS for over 10 years. And I asked her, what is the most powerful marketing tool you have? And she said, just listed, just sold cards. She said, no question. She said, I list a home, I send out two or 300 just listed cards. I said, the following, and she'll name the people, the Smiths, have retained me to handle the sale of their home. And here's a chance for you to pick your neighbor. Who, if you know anyone that wants to move in this area, call me today. What a great call to action. Then she said, when it sells, I send out two or 300 more uh, just sold cards. And it says, and get this, listen to this carefully. The sale of any other home impacts the value of yours. The sale of any other home impacts the value of yours. If you want to know the value of your home or need to sell it, call me today. What a great call to action. And she said, as I did that more and more than people thought of me when they thought of real estate and that when they needed to list, they called me or they referred someone to me. And I became the dominant listing agent in my area. And of course, that drew me all kinds of buyers too. And eventually this person built a seventh level team. But that's a different issue. What it does is it launches your career. So number one is I want you to be very listing oriented and, and very good at that. Number two is I want you to be really good at articulating your value proposition. See, being able to talk about why do business with me is a very important skill. I learned that in, in the Dale Carnegie course. Uh, I had gotten into sales and marketing, my first ever job, once they let me out of the institution of higher education, and I got my first real world job. I was VP of sales and marketing of a large graphic arts and printing company, and I had never been in selling. So a good friend of mine said, Dave, you know, the Dale Carnegie organization has a course in selling. I'm learning based like you are on this call today. So I went and took that course. And I tell you, it taught me how to articulate things and how to make an effective sales presentation and how to be really good at selling. And I gained a whole um, new image of what the profession of selling was. And so anyway, I, I learned that. 
And I used that skill and I used it as I taught real estate agents and did real estate. I, I taught that uh, in my leadership. And just to give you an example, when I moved with Keller Williams, I became the road warrior. I was the articulate person about the value of Keller Williams. I was the Johnny Appleseed. And I remember uh, a, uh, one of my former staff members at Century 21, her name was Christy, Christy Torian, whose father had worked with Remax. She went with the Remax administrative at the corporate headquarters. And she wrote me an email in 2003. And she said, Dave, you know, um, uh, I just came back from a meeting in Atlanta and we spent a whole afternoon in Remax discussing how to compete with Keller Williams. And they put your picture up on the slide and said, this is Dave Jenks and he's their wordsmith and he is articulating their value and we better pay attention to him because that's the message he's given to our agents. So, uh, so being an articulator of value proposition is a big deal and it, does, it comes with work. It comes with intention and work. And so we're going to talk about that for yourself today. And then you want to become a master of the art of influence. You want so that when you talk, other people listen. When you make suggestions, other people do it. You have a way of, of talking, of convincing them in their own interest to do what your suggestion, you become a master of the art of influence. And the core of all this is building an effective listing presentation. I mean, I learned this Early in my career, I went to a big uh, training session, 2,000 people uh, run by Mike Ferry in Scottsdale, Arizona. And he got up in front of that room and he said, we succeed in real estate based on three skills, one prospecting, two presenting, three closing. Which of those things, which of those skills do you think is most important? How many think it's prospecting? And of course, that's what he teaches. So like every hand went up and he went, no, it's not. How many think it's closing, being good at, you know, staying in there, hanging in, answering their questions, getting them to sign? Yeah, maybe half the hands went up and he went, nope, it's presenting. Because until you have mastered your listing presentation, you won't, you won't prospect. You won't know what to say. You won't know your value proposition. You won't know how to answer questions. You won't have the confidence. You won't have the confidence until you have the competence of mastering your listing presentation. You won't prospect, and of course, if you give a bad listing presentation, odds are you won't, no matter how slick a closer you are, you won't get that either. So the core of becoming a great agent, and this is what I learned in Dale Carnegie, the core of becoming a great salesperson is mastering your presentation. We're gonna work on that today. And one of the aspects of this that people misunderstand is scripts and dialogues. Scripts are just great ways to say things. In fact, I want you to think that scripts are the poetry of selling. Scripts are the poetry of selling. They're the most powerful way to say things. And we love scripts and dialogues. All of us, we, you know, we binge on Netflix. We uh, love to go to movies. And what are movies? They're just people who are, who are saying scripts. Great screenwriters who are really good with words and dialogue, they write scripts. And then actors and actresses just memorize them and internalize them and then deliver them in a credible way and we get touched emotionally but it all began with the screenwriters writing the words and if an if a if a actor or actress goes off script if they start to kind of invent their own way of saying it the director will say no 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 you're going off script go back to exactly how it's written i want it delivered that way Right, so scripts and dialogues, we're used to them and it's the effective way to communicate things. Scripts are the poetry of selling and we're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. And then I want you to get in touch with the fact that language makes a difference. And there's a wonderful book called Words That Sell by Richard Bayan, B-A-Y-A-N. I highly recommend it, go get it. It's better than a dictionary. And because in it, he's a copywriter, he writes the effective way to say the 20 or 30 benefits of working with us <clears throat> and how to say it in different ways and then how to put attention getters in our in our marketing materials so people want to read it and respond to it words that sell and as you read his language you will begin to develop more powerful ways to say things because you inherently know when you hear poetry when you hear good things you will know how to say that and all of this is about building your self confidence because we're in a, the most competitive sport there is. 
Real estate is the most competitive entrepreneurial sport there is. There are so many people in real estate, so many people going after business, so many people trying to get listings. And what the hardest thing to build is your confidence, the confidence in being a great listing agent. And understand this, you can self-talk your, your way into a little bit of confidence, but not much, right? It's better to do positive self-talk than negative, but no, no. You know what leads to confidence? Competence. Competence leads to confidence. When you're really good at real estate and you're really good at making a listing presentation, when you're competent, then you have amazing confidence. You just go into things knowing you're going to say the right thing and you're going to get yeses and you're going to move on in a negotiation anywhere. So the game we're playing today is building your self-confidence by building your competence. And then that gives you control of your career. So then you now, as a listing agent, can go the seventh level, as we talk about in MREA. You can go from being a personal producer to a high level personal producer. You can add admins and get up to 100, 200 transactions. Uh, by yourself with admin and then start to add team members and you can control your career, right? By being a, list, a powerful listing agent. So all of this can have major impact on your future and your business. So there's three things I wanna focus on today, competence, communication, and presentation. Competence, communication, and presentation. Let's talk, let's talk first about um, competence. We get paid for what we do. People pay business with us because of our knowledge, our skills, and our attitudes. Uh, we used to call that in Dale Carnegie, the, the, the ASK triangle, ASK, attitudes, skills, and knowledge. People succeed based on their attitudes, their skills, and their knowledge. And in real estate, what do we get paid for? Well, we get paid for our knowledge about contracts, finance, and property evaluation. By the way, people would come to Gary and I, and they'd say, well, you know, it's real estate. It's not rocket science. And we go, oh, yes, it is done at the highest level, at the best level. Real estate is rocket science. What you have to know, the complexity of what you have to know and the skills you have to build and the disciplines you have to develop. Oh, they're way advanced over what the normal person does. So, no, it is rocket science. It is brain surgery. So what do we get paid for? We, we get paid for our knowledge of contracts, finance and property evaluation. Mr. And Mrs. Seller. One of the reasons you will want to list with me is I'm a master of real estate contracts. There will be 75 or 85 pages of legal documents that I will review on your behalf and make sure they're filled out right and correct and no mistakes and no one's taken advantage of you. And you can be, feel confident in signing those contracts and going to closing because I am a master of real estate contracts. Now, you want to be able to say that. See, that's why they want to list with you, not how many listings you've taken or how much business you've done or certificates you have or testimonials. They want to know your competence. I had an agent two months ago say, Dave, this was brilliant. This was so good for me because I really know contracts and I know financing and I know how to evaluate properties and do CMAs. But I didn't think, I kind of thought that was like what everybody did. And I, what I realized is no. Not everyone does it at the level I do it. So I need to state it just like you're saying about this is my competence. What you get with me is I'm a master of real estate contracts. Number two is top agents say that, that most um, new agents uh, delegate too much of their financing to their mortgage, their mortgage officer. And they say, no, yes, you delegate to them the pre-approvals and the application and the underwriting, but not the knowledge. You need to know financing and qualification and all that if you're going to serve your buyers for sure, but also your sellers in evaluating contracts and offers on your home. And then the third one is property evaluation. This is a big deal, right? We are, we are masters of knowing what homes are worth, right? So I would say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, one of the things you'll find in working with me is that I'm a master of property evaluation. I'm not a licensed appraiser, but I am better than they are at predicting what a home will sell for. But more importantly, how to make your home worth more so that we can get the highest possible price for your home, which I guarantee because I'm a master of property evaluation. So you wanna be able to state that benefit of working with you that strongly, right? That strongly. And the way you do it is you get competent. You spend the time with, with Candy mastering contracts, 
and with your mortgage officer in mastering finance and, and then going out and doing evaluations in the market and practice CMAs. I mean, I remember having Mike Mendoza drive me around Ahwatukee and he could point to homes and say when that last sold and what it sold for and what it was listed for and then what it sold for. And he, I mean, he knew all those properties. He could do a CMA in his head. Why? He knew his properties, but it took work to do that. He had to be focused over several months and years to know his market that well. Well, that's where you want to get, right? So competence. Then skills. You're going to show them your communication skills. We're going to talk about that in a second. You're going to absolutely demonstrate your presentation skills. And then negotiating is all about using the Y4C2Ts, the Keller Williams rules of engagement, right? Win, win, or no deal. Together, everyone achieves more. Seek first to understand. Customer always comes first. I mean, all those things are really the heart of getting people to see the right thing to do and then to do it together. So that's negotiating. So knowledge and skills, but then there's attitudes. And we began every book that Gary and Jay and I wrote with how, how a millionaire real estate agent thinks, how a millionaire real estate investor thinks, how a tough, a top agent in tough times thinks, shift. And so we, we really worked on this whole idea of how we think, because your attitude going into the venture is, is so determinant of how it turns out. But there's three to me, in inherent attitudes of a top listing agent, intention, assertiveness, and commitment. And intention means that you get things done. You make things happen. You have goals, you have monthly goals, you have activities, you have action plans, you have time blocking, you have accountability, you make things happen, you get things done. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, one of the things you'll love about working with me is I'm a person of intention. In my life, I get things done. I have goals. I achieve those goals. I have a track I'm running on. I use my time well. I make a, I, I get th good things done. So when I take on your listing, you know that it's going to get sold at the highest possible price because I'm a person of intention and you can count on that, right? You want to be able to talk like that. Be a person of intention. By the way, you've got to be a person of intention. You, I mean, to... You have to have your goals, you have to have your sub goals, your 411, your 135, your accountability, your time blocking, all that in place. When you have that in place, then you've got competence and your confidence will be high. Number two, and this next one's a big one, assertiveness. See, I think almost everyone in real estate could be more assertive than they are. Not more aggressive. Assertiveness isn't aggressive. Assertiveness is, is aggressiveness tries to control and manipulate people. Assertiveness just steps up and makes the right thing happen and states what they want, doesn't sit back, tells the truth. You want to become, and it takes some risk to be an assertive person, but more, more people in real estate could be assertive. And I had to learn this. I was a district manager in Century 21, making $18,000 a year in Syracuse, New York, and I wanted to become a regional director for Century 21. Uh, that would make 150,000 plus bonuses. And I wanted that level of authority. Well, as I put that down as a goal, I said, well, Dave, you're too laid back. You're too much of a nice guy. You want everyone to like you. You worry of too much about other people's opinions of you. You need to stand up and take a risk and express and ask for what you want and take control of a situation and make good outcomes happen. You need to get more assertive. So I found this thing called the Assertiveness Bill of Rights. It's a wonderful one page document and it just states what it means to be assertive and how to be assertive. And I put it in front of me on my desk. And I'll tell you what, I, I became director of training for three states. Um, and so here's the, here's the funny story. The gentleman who was regional director, Marv Hart, his name was, got promoted to the, the, inter, the national office, international office of Century 21 in California and was moved out. Uh, become the executive vice president of that. And then he was replaced by a guy by the name of George, who became the regional director where I was. Well, I became the director of training and worked closely with George. And then he left, he got promoted to become regional director in Atlanta. And so this job was now open and I volunteered for, and I was given a chance to interview for the job. And I'm out in California across the desk from Marv. 
And um, Marv set me up to let me down. I can tell you, see, Dave, I'm so proud of what you've accomplished and it's wonderful you're here as a candidate. You know, we have so many great leaders in Century 21 and I could see here it was coming, you know, you're good, but not yet and not now. And I said, Marv, let me stop you right now. I said, I want you to know the man sitting across the desk from you today is not the man you left back in New York three years ago. This guy is more assertive, more take charge, and I know exactly what that region needs, and I am going to make it rock. <laughs> he kind of went, well, really? Well, what would you do, Dave? And I had my list, and I said, there are 10 things, Marv, and I boom, 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 went the list, and I got the job. Why? Because I had learned to be assertive. I wasn't aggressive, but I stood up and defended myself and expressed myself in a way that was persuasive, and I got the job. And that led me then to become a, you know, a divisional president for them and then on to Keller Williams. So assertiveness matters. And that assertiveness bill of rights is a great guide. And I would say all of us could become more assertive. And the final one was is something I learned from Tom Caldwell. Now, Tom Caldwell was one of the real pioneers in Keller Williams. He was the president of Van Scott Realty, the biggest independent real estate company in Denver. And he went to a meeting in Florida where Gary Keller was a, a speaker and Dave Linegar was a speaker and he listened to both of them and a bunch of other speakers and he came back and said to his wife Gwen, he said, Gwen, the future of real estate is Gary Keller. Where he's going and what he sees is exactly the future of real estate and I want to be part of it. And so he gave up his cushy job with Van Scott, went down to Austin, signed up to be the regional partner, regional owner for the Colorado region, went back up into Remax's backyard and built Keller Williams. Amazing sold it for a couple million dollars a few years later. And now he and his wife, Gwen, who live in Arizona, uh, travel the world because he's a real history buff. But he's taught me something I'll never forget. He said, Dave, here's the key to success in real estate, doing what you say you'll do, doing what you say you'll do. You need to be a person of commitment. If you say you're gonna do it, then you do it. And he said, I keep a commitment list Above my to-do list, I have a to-do list, but I have a commitment list. Anytime I say to somebody, I'll get back to you, I'll schedule lunch next week, uh, I'll get you that piece of information, let me send that to you, uh, let's set up a meeting, whatever it is, he said, I write that on that list and I make sure I complete my commitments before I even focus on my to-do list. So he said, be a person of commitment. And you can say that, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what you'll find in working with me is I'm a person of commitment. If, I'm say, if I say I'm going to do something, you can take it to the bank. Promises made, promises kept. I am a person of commitment. That's who they want to work with. So be that. Step up, be it, live it, say it. So attitude, intention, assertiveness, commitment. So there's the whole area, attitude, skills, and knowledge of competence. Once we become competent, it will increase our confidence. Now, the second part of this is communication, and then we're going to get to presentation. So communication is a big part of generally impacting people, and I learned that in the Dale Carnegie Institute too. Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is in the top 200 of Amazon.com every year, and Amazon.com now sends, sells tens, tens of thousands of different book titles, but, but How to Win Friends and Influence People is in the top 200 every year. Uh, and it was written 75 years ago. Why is it there? Timeless truth. It's built on timeless truth. And just like MREA, MREA is the number one best-selling book in the history of real estate, still number one on amazon.com today, 1.4 million copies sold. Why is it still number one? And it was written 17 years ago? Timeless truth, it's built. And so I would say to everyone on this call, build your life on timeless truth, not on current fads, not on current little sparkly things and clever ideas. Build your life on timeless truths. This is the time, how to win friends and influence people, MREA. So what Dale Carnegie says is the big three of great communication are number one, don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Because when you go in that negative space, you're not a very good person to communicate with and you'll be stuck. Now, don't do it in front of others for sure, but don't even do it. And then certainly if you have a precious relationship like I have with my wife, Gina, we really work to not criticize, condemn, or complain in front of each other or about each other for sure. So don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Number two is give honest and sincere appreciation. Maybe the most powerful script in the world is 
thank you. I really appreciate that. Powerful script, right? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, thank you for opening your home and letting me have the right to earn uh, the right to handle the sale of your home. Thank you for, for letting me be here for this opportunity. Always say thank you. Always, always tell people what you appreciate. Have an attitude of gratitude. And then the third one is focus on what others want. Zig Ziglar said, you will get what you want in direct proportion to the number of people who you help get what they want. You get what you want by helping others get what they want. Be focused on what others want. I'll give you a little, a great example of that with Althea Osborne a little later. So focus on what others want because we're in a service industry and our first thing is to get them what they want. And then of course we'll succeed. So there are the big three, don't criticize, condemn, or complain, give honest, sincere appreciation, focus on what others want. And here are the supportive six. Number one, be genuinely interested in other people. Let your curiosity drive you. Gary Gentry, who closed the first uh, transaction ever in the history of Keller Williams back in 1983, still with us, and his wife, Melody, a great, have a great real estate team in Austin, Texas. And he said, Dave, I have such curiosity about people that I can learn more about them in half an hour than anyone else I know. I ask great questions. I listen carefully. I probe them. They trust me. He said, I can learn more about them and I really bond with them. And number two is smile. Let that, I know with the age of masks and all this stuff, our nonverbals have been kind of covered up, but let your positive energy come through you physically. Smile, let it be in your eyes, be positive. Third, remember people's names. It's the most pleasant sound in their, in their ear. It's, your, it's the label of connection. And don't say this. Don't say, Dave, I'm no good at remembering names. Dave, I've never been good at remembering names. Dave, I can't remember names. Don't give yourself that toss, that self-talk. Why would you do that? Say, Dave, I'm getting better at remembering names. Dave, I'm developing techniques. I'm getting more intentional about remembering people's names. I'm getting better at that. Do that. And by the way, understand, it's not easy for anybody. And the reason is it's two different parts of the brain. Our emotional connection with people and our awareness of them is a right brain. That's where we really kind of know who they are and what they're about and we remember them. But all the labels, their name, where they came from, where they went to school, uh, what the kids' names are, the pets' names, all those are, are left brain. So we have to do the work it takes to connect the right and left brain and get that information together. And the key of it is write it down and repetition. In other words, every time you meet somebody new, write their name down. You know, if it's a waitress or somebody where you just say, oh, let me get that. Let me, and how do you spell that? Okay. And if you forget to do that and you're in a conversation, you realize you either they didn't give you the name or you don't remember it. Say, oops, I had a, I'm sorry, I had a brain glitch. Uh, what was your name? Okay, Mary. Yeah, Mary. Good, good. And make sure you spell it right. And if it's Elizabeth, so Elizabeth, is it Elizabeth or Beth or do you, Liz? What do you prefer? Okay, Dave, David, make sure you know the way they like to be addressed. But the key is get it written down. And then number two is use it repetitively. Dave, thank you very much for letting me come here and, and really work to earn the right to handle the sale of your home. Let me tell you what I'm going to do, Dave, in the next few minutes. I'm going to ask you a series of questions so I can get a clear picture, Dave, of what you're trying to achieve and how I can help. Is that okay, Dave? See, now I've used it five times in, in just a, a couple of, just a minute. And you say, well, Dave, that's a little bit much. And no, it isn't. You can't overuse their name. But in the use of their name, you will then remember it. Remember, repetition is the mother of memory. Repetition is the mother of recall. So use repetition. So remember their name. Give it a focus. And then now encourage others to talk about themselves. Remember, in this whole time, if you think about the whole uh, listing appointment, once you get there, the first, whatever it is, half hour, 40 minutes, is about getting to know them and the property and a sense of what matters to them. So it's all focused on them. And then we come down to about 20 minutes of where the rubber meets the road for making our presentation to get a yes, I want you to handle the listing, okay? Make sure, and then the rest of our time there is, is doing the work, getting the listing agreement, getting our pricing strategy, taking pictures, measurements, whatever we need to do, okay? But that the crux of where you, you don't really focus on you until you're into that 20 minute presentation. Okay, so 
what we have them do is, in, is, is have them talk about them. So have lots of great questions, be curious, follow up about them, their family, family members, pets, interests, all that stuff, and talk about their interests, not yours. This isn't a time for you to talk. And a lot of people make this mistake of thinking that if we share a common interest that that'll bond us. Like if I said, so what do you like to do for recreation? Oh, I like to play golf. You like to play golf? Oh, I'm addicted to golf. I love it. I'm a 5.2 handicap. What are you? Yeah, I'm a member of the Oak Hill Country Club. Are you a member of a club? Yeah, and what great courses have you had a chance to play? I've gotten to play Pebble Beach. Isn't that amazing? What have I done? I've taken the focus away from them and now it's all about me and that's not gonna feel good to them. So talk about their interests, not yours, no me twos, no me twos. So if you have an interest, say you love movies and you say, Hot, what do you like? To, and they say, oh, we like to watch movies. Then let that guide your questions. Oh, wonderful. Um, so what kind of movies do you particularly like? All right, are there any actresses or actors, uh, actors you like to follow? What about directors, any directors? What, what films have you seen recently that, that you would encourage me to go see? That's great, thank you. I, really, I love movies too, right? That's it, simple. Talk about their interest, not yours. And then the other one is make others feel important. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, thank you for opening your home. By the way, uh, I want to earn the right to handle the sale of your home and I know you will be the boss. I have to please you. So I'm here to, tonight to earn your respect and to gain your agreement to handle the sale of your home. And when we work together, I'll give you information and I'll give you the latest guidance and my advice if you want it, but I will do whatever you say because you're the boss. So you got that? Now, and if they have a position of authority in their work, they own a business or they have an office, then honor them for that. You know, honor them for, or if they have a, a volunteer position they're in, compliment them, make them feel important about that. So those are the supportive six. Be genuinely interested in other people, let your curiosity drive you, smile, let your energy come through physically, remember people's names, remember, write it down and use repetition to get good at that. Encourage others to talk about themselves, talk about their interests, not yours, no me too's, and then make others feel important. So we've dealt with competence and communication, and now we wanna deal with presentation. And the first place we go is understanding the power of scripts and dialogues. What Gary Keller says is that others have gone before us and they have succeeded at a high level and they have learned how to talk effectively with buyers and sellers and they've passed us on to that, passed that on to us in the, in the form of scripts. So if we wanna be really good, we need to memorize the powerful way to say things. In other words, scripts are the poetry of selling. Linda McKissick, who went from failing out of real estate in 1991, almost failed out of real estate. Eight years later, she's our first ever seventh level agent, meaning the McKissick group closed 352 sales that year. She has four admins, five buyer specialists, two listing specialists, and a manager. She's not even managing it. She's the owner, that's seventh level, Linda McKissick, under her brand, her label, her. And she said, Dave, what unlocked it for me was learning how to say things effectively. She said, I was kind of a down-home country girl, kind of tell it like it is, but mostly I was boring and ineffective. And she said, I listened to other agents and how well they spoke, and I asked them about that and they said they had mastered and learned new, you know, new ways to say things. So I started mastering my scripts and she said that unlaunched my career. I mastered scripts in asking for business. I mastered script in making listing presentations. I mastered scripts in presenting offers. I mastered scripts in hiring people to my team. She said, it's all about your mastering your language, your scripts and your dialogues. That's how you build, that's how you build the business. And she wrote a wonderful book called Presentation Mastery, which is a wonderful book. You can probably reach her and, and get it from her. Uh, so Linda McKissick, Presentation Mastery. So what's the key? Gary Keller says you memorize, internalize, customize, and capitalize. In other words, the first thing you do is what actors and actresses have to do. They have to memorize it exactly as is. Exactly. Don't change it to your words. Don't dumb it down. Don't try and make it sound natural. No. Master it as it is because it's poetry. It's meant. It has a rhythm and a purpose of the way it's said. The words are selected carefully. The rhythm of those words are important. You'll see it in scripts we're going to do. 
So master it, memorize it. It is now practice your memorizing. Memorize quotes like you will get what you want in direct proportion to the number of people who you think, you know, who you help get what they want. Or Earl Nightingale said, success is the progressive realization of personal predetermined worthwhile goals. Whatever it is, master your quotes and even master some poetry. I know as we were coming into this uh, COVID time, I was reminded of Rudyard Kipling's poem, right? If you can keep your head while all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself while others doubt you and yet make allowance for their doubting too. If you can uh, wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, not dealing lies or being hated, not give way to hating and yet not act too good or talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. And then it goes on for a couple more verses and it fin finishes with, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, then yours is the world and anything that's in it. And more than that, life's battle you'll have won. I love it, Rudyard Kipling's poem, If. But the fun part is memorizing it. My, brother, my brothers and I used to get together for a family reunion when my mom was still alive every July. And we, it, one of the things was a family tradition was we put on skits and we had to present things. And so I would memorize poems like The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, you know, things like that. But what a great exercise. It's fun to memorize things. So memorize, then you internalize it. And what that means is, when you internalize it, you get the emotional power of it. Now you understand why that's an effective way to say it because you've internalized it. And now when it comes back out, even though it will be word for word the way it was supposed to, it'll be done with your natural emotions, right? And so you internalize it, you customize it. Customize it means a lot of people misunderstand scripts. They think there's a long drawn out script of a presentation. No, 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 it's chunks. Scripts are chunks of dialogue that you use selectively. So one of the ones to customize is handle the sale of your home. My job, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is to handle the sale of your home. I'm applying for the job of handling the sale of your home. Not list it, sell it, market it. Those are dumbed down languages. No, be fiduciary. Handle the sale of your home. Anytime you're talking about your work, it's what, you, what I do is I help handle the sale of the home handle the sale of your home. That's customizing it, right? Just like thank you, or I appreciate that as a customized script. So use them in chunks. And then of course you'll capitalize because you'll get what you want. So let's now talk about how you make presentations. So the, the heart of the, remember we've done competence, we've done communication, and now we're doing presentation. So the listing presentation has several steps. And remember, you've been doing the communication part and building rapport as you're coming to this point where now you're down to the game. The game is to present your value proposition and to have them agree for you to handle the sale of their home. So we're going to set the stage to make sure we get their mind in the right place and we're focused on what's going to happen next. And then we're going to make the presentation. Then we're going to highlight the key benefits of working with us and how we get the results we do. And then we're gonna talk pricing and staging. And if we need to, we're gonna talk about commission. So let's, let's dive in. I learned this one from Mike Ferry, it's brilliant. It's called the one minute listing presentation. It goes like this, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I've written down three very important questions. May I ask them? First, do you absolutely have to sell your home? Okay. Second, are you willing to price it to sell? Okay. And third, would you like me to handle the sale for you? All right. See, now, why is it the one minute listing presentation? Well, listen to this, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I've written down three very important questions. May I ask them? Great. One, do you absolutely have to sell your home? Oh yeah, Dave, we got to be out here in six or eight weeks and we got to get it sold. Okay. And two, are you willing to price it to sell? Well, we want to get the most we can, but We'll, we'll list it for whatever price you say we should, okay? And third, would you like me to handle the sale for you? Oh yeah, Dave, you come so highly recommended. Yeah, we want to list with you. Great, let's get to work. See, I've got the listing. I don't have to even ask. Oh, I guess you want to list with me? <laughs> no, I mean, I got three yeses to those questions. So now I'm going to start filling out the contract. Uh, I'm going to work on pricing. I'm going to work on staging. I'm going to work on time when we're going to put it on the market and the marketing of it. Um, we're going to get to work. You just assume it. You don't, you don't just assume you've got a yes. You've got three yeses. 
you got it. That's why it's a one minute listing presentation. That presentation took less than a minute and I got a yes and here we are, we're done. There's no more need to talk about what I do, how many sales I've done, what my certificates are, any of that, no? Mm -mm. So let's go to another way that this might happen. So Mr. Uh, Mr. Mrs. Seller, I've written down three very important questions. Can I ask them? Great. Do you absolutely have to sell your home? Well, no, no, Dave, we love our home. We love it here. We just thought we'd put it on the market and kind of see what it would get. Wonderful, great. Are you willing to price it to sell? Well, we need to get at least 900,000 for it. We need to get at least 900,000. Okay, great. Uh, would you like me to handle the sale for you? Oh, well, we're interviewing two other agents too. All right, great, let's get started. See, now what I know is, in other words, I didn't engage them in any of their answers. I just said, thank you. I mean, like, thank you for sharing, but it gave me three pieces of information. Number one is their motivation. Are they absolutely, do they absolutely have to sell in the case of what I just heard? No, that didn't sound like it. They were happy here. And I'm not going to take a listing where I'm just putting it on the market to see what they could get. I'm not. So I'm not, so I have to check that and see if that really is their motivation. Are they willing to price it to sell? They're saying they need 900,000. I know I'm going to be able to at most get seven, 780, 790 for it. I know I have an education. So the first one's motivation, second one's education. I'm going to have to educate you about the market and pricing and what the highest price is we can get for their property. And the third one is, would you like me to handle a sale for you? That's the commitment question. And they go, no, they're interviewing two other agents. And so I know I need to be so good in my presentation and create such a sense of urgency that they want me to take the listing. And then I can say, okay, great, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, by the way, I'll call those other two agents and let them know they can bring their buyers to your home, but that we've got the listing handled. Would you like me to do that? Great. I'd be happy to. So that's the, th that's the one minute listing presentation. It tells you their motivation. It tells you their education about pricing and it tells you their commitment to you. And if you get three yeses, you've got the listing. Let's move on. All right, so there's another thing in this setting the stage is sometimes their mind is somewhere else and we need to get them focused on right now because now it's showtime. In the next 15 to 20 minutes, they're gonna make a decision um, about listing with you and you want to get their attention. And so this is called the, the three outcomes. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, at the end of our meeting, one of three things will happen. One, you will decide to have me handle the sale for you. Or two, you will decide not to list with me. Or three, I will decide not to take your listing. Now, any of those three is okay with me. Does that make sense? Well, oh, I don't know, Dave. So See, right away, they know they better be paying attention because the decision is going to be made right now. And that you're not there out of a need, uh, you know, dollar signs in your eyes. You don't have to have this listing. You're willing to walk. And they might say, well, Dave, why wouldn't you take our listing? And you go, because my job is to not only meet your expectations, but exceed them. So after we talk, if I think I can't exceed your expectations, I'm not going to bind you into a listing and we'll, we'll part friends and move on. That sound right? Okay, but we think we'd like you to have you handle it. <laughs> you know, you'll find they'll want to come. They'll come more toward you when you're willing to walk away. So this is a real place. But also, you're getting them to pay attention now. Now, the other thing you can do is shorten down their sense of how long this is going to take, because they may think this is going to go on for a long time. So you would say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, at the end of our meeting, which, by the way, will only take about another 15 minutes, 20 at the most, one of three things will happen. One, you will decide to have me handle the sale for you. Notice how I do positive. Or you will decide not to list with me. Like, why would you do that? See, like, well, you will decide not to list with me. Or I will decide not to take your listing. Kind of almost a threat, right? I will decide not to take your listing. Any of those three is okay with me. Does that make sense? Now we find out where they are, right? So that's called setting the stage three outcomes. Now, there's another powerful thing I learned from Floyd Whitman. And that is that people want to know what's going to happen next. If you say, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, here's what's going to happen next. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, once you list with me, I'm going to report to you on a weekly basis exactly where things stand and you'll know how we're doing. See, anytime you tell people what's going to happen next, they get a sense of security. So that's what this is called the safe island. And we're talking about your listing presentation that you're now ready to plunge into, right? And so the, the, the memory technique here is called stacking. You know, it's where you take objects and put them on top of one another, and that allows you to memorize what's going to happen next, because you'll remember in your mind the objects, and that'll stand for what's going to happen, what you're going to say or what you're going to do. Like, as you remember, Debbie, when I 
came and taught uh, scripts and dialogues uh, at the market center, we went for three hours and I was up in front of everybody and I didn't have any notes. And we, and we went through 18 or 19 different scripts, memorizing them in repetition. And I didn't allow anyone else to take notes. I was going from my mind to your mind. And in that whole thing, I knew exactly what we were doing next because I had all the scripts stacked as objects in my mind. So I didn't need any notes. And the same thing with you in making a speech or teaching a class, you can have these stacked objects. So let's show you how this works in this particular case. So at the bottom of the stack is the letter B followed by the number four, B4. On top of, of B4 is a stopwatch with only one minute. And we think one minute, we think minute. And out of the top of the stopwatch are four steps and they're numbered one, two, three, four. On the top step are a bunch of question marks all gobbled together, question marks. On top of the question mark is a grocery cart. We call it a market basket, you know, like you would have in a supermarket full of numbers, right? A market basket. On top of the market basket is a jail cell, a window with bars in it, prisoner in it. And we think jail cell. Right on top of the jail cell is a spiral staircase of steps, and we think steps. So what's on the bottom? Before, then what? One minute, then four steps, then question marks, then market basket, then jail cell, then steps. Okay, so then this is how we would kind of use that as our memory stack, and we'd say, okay, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, before we begin, may I take a minute to tell you how I work? Basically, I use a four-step process. First, I'm going to ask you a series of questions so I can get a clear idea of what you want to accomplish and how I can help. Then I'm going to give you enough market information for you to make a rational decision about the price to place on your property. And then I'm going to honestly sell you on the benefits of working with me and my company and how we get the results we do. And when you hire me to handle the sale of your home, I'm gonna tell you step-by-step step all the things I will do to cause your home to sell. How's that sound? Should we get started? Okay, here we go, right? So now you've set the stage. Now you plunge in to your presentation. Set it up by, by the way, you may have a five-step process. You may have a three, four, but the idea to them is you're looking organized. They have the security of knowing where this presentation is going it's a great technique to put you in control, okay? Now let's look at the, the, the core of being a person of influence. I learned this in the Dale Carnegie presentation. The core of being a great salesman is to understand the flow of facts, benefits, feelings. Facts, benefits, feelings. Facts, benefits, feelings. Facts are what I do. Benefits are what they get. Feelings are how they will feel after they get that delivered the benefit, right? So facts, benefits, feelings, facts, benefits, feelings. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, here's what I do, which means that you get this and this will make you feel blank, right? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, uh, as I said, you can ask me questions at any time, but what I will do is set up a regular time every week to report to you on how we're progressing with the sale of your home, which means that you'll know we're on track and exactly where we are and have that feeling of being respected, listened to, and peace of mind. Does that make sense? Great. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, as I said, I am I'm a student of the marketplace, so I'm going to give you all the latest market information so that we can make a rational decision together on the price to place on your property, which means you will get the highest possible price for your property and you'll have that feeling of satisfaction and well-being of getting the most for your home. Does that sound right? Mr. And Mrs. Seller, as I said, there will be 75 or 85 pages of legal and financial documents that I will review in detail on your behalf to make sure they're filled out accurately, no mistakes, no one's taken advantage of you, and then you can feel comfortable about signing those documents and moving toward closing with a feeling of kind of peace of mind and satisfaction. Does that make sense? Good. See, so every time you tell them something you're going to do, you focus on the benefit they receive from that. You'll see this showing up later and then how that makes them feel and really do focus on describing that people have peace of mind and they feel respected and secure and confident and satisfied and happy and joyous, right? So this is the core of being a person of influence. 
focusing your message is always on facts, benefits, and the outcome feelings. Now, pay real close attention because this next page is the heart of a great listing presentation. It's simple, it's direct, it's the heart of a great listing presentation. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, there's really three reasons to list with me. One is you can trust me. Two is I will answer all your questions. And three is I will protect you all the way through closing. Does that sound right? Should we get started? Great. See, that's it. That's it. That's what you're gonna provide. That's what they care about. They care about that they can trust you. That's number one. Number two is you'll take them seriously and answer all their questions and that you will take, you'll be the fiduciary. You will protect them all the way through closing. You'll take care of things. That's what they want. These three things. That's more important than anything else. This is the emotional part of the, of the, of why list with me. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, there's really three reasons to list with me. One, you could trust me. Two, I will answer all your questions. And three, I will protect you all the way through closing. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Let's go. And you start. Well, if they say, wait, 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 we're not, we're not ready yet. You say, okay, what's on your mind? So we can get there. But the point is, don't assume they're going to be resistant because this is, this is the key. Now you can fill it in. If it feels a little more comfortable, you can say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, really, there's three reasons to list with me. One is you can trust me. People who work with me say they would trust me with their children and their bank account. You can trust me. Number two is I will answer all your questions. And I'm a professional. So I know what I know and I know what I don't. And if I know the answer, you'll get it. And if I don't know the answer, I've got this world-class company behind me and I will get us the right answer, but I will always answer your questions. And three, I will protect you all the way to closing. I will take care of all those legal documents. I'll take care of any issues that come up. I'll make sure that no one else is taking advantage of you and you're getting what you want. I will protect you all the way through closing. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so master this, the three reasons to list with me. It's the heart of your presentation. And that's what they care about. And that's what you can have the confidence about. Now, there are a bunch of things you're going to do. So the magic is on page 95 of MREA. Page 95 is a listing presentation on one page in MREA. You could take, make a photocopy of that page and you could, um, you could just bring it into a listing appointment and read those 10 things that you're going to do. And that would be better than 95% of all listing presentations they're ever going to get. Why? Because you're actually telling them what you're going to do. You're not trying to sell them on working with you. You're going to tell them what you're going to do. So it goes like this, by the way, you say, by the way, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, there's really 10 important things that I do to serve you and get your home sold successfully. How much detail would you like me to go into? Oh, Dave, you don't need to go into any detail. No, no, no. You'll tell us what we need to know when we need to know it. Let's get, let's get to work. Great. Or they might say, so you might say, so there are 10 important things I do to serve you and get your home sold successfully. How much detail would you like me to go in? Oh, Dave, tell us. We always wondered what real estate agents really did. Yeah, tell us those 10 things. That would be great. You're great. Great. Let's do this. Number one is I'm going to ask you a series of questions and do a thorough needs analysis. So I am really clear on your priorities and how I can get those done. Number two is I'm going to give you enough market information to make an intelligent pricing strategy. So we get the most possible money for your home. And then as part of that, I'm going to recommend some repairs and improvements and some staging strategies that will make your home worth more and compete effectively against the other homes in the marketplace. And then number four, uh, we'll develop the right of marketing strategy. I have 14 steps of the way I market a home and we'll decide which ones are right for your home. Now, my job really begins number five when we get offers because then I'm going to evaluate those offers and see if we're willing to take our home off the market or if we want to make a counter offer and negotiate. And in that case, number six, I will negotiate the final contract. We may get multiple offers. And I will work all that negotiation so that we get to a final contract that meets your terms, your needs, and has no surprises. Okay. And as part of that, number seven, there may be requests by the, by the buyer to do some repairs and work lists. And I will put those together. I have vendors that'll do this. I'll get prices. I'd never do anything without your approval. And I will coordinate getting those repairs done. And then, of course, as I said, number eight, there will be 
you know, multiple pages, 75 or 80 pages of legal documents and financial documents that I will review on your behalf, make sure they're accurate, correct, and they meet your needs. No one's taking advantage of you. Um, and I, we will get all that done and be on our way to go to closing. And then of course at closing, I'm there to solve any last minute problems or uh, answer any of your questions. And then after closing, I wanna be your realtor for life. So first of all, I'm gonna help you with your move by the way, do you have an agent yet in where you're moving to? Because if you don't, I'm happy to, I can get you a great agent there and then I can coordinate the sale of this home with the purchase of that one. Does that make sense? Would you like me to do that? Great, happy to do it. And of course, the sale of your home creates a tax event. So I will get you all the documents to take to your CPA uh, or your um, tax prep person in doing next year's taxes. That sound good? Good, any questions? All right, let's get started. Lots of work to do. All right, so there you go. See, in, in a short period of time, two or three minutes, you have really told them everything you're gonna do in a powerful way that creates the benefit for them. Now let's get into some specialty scripts, some things that really, um, that set you above other agents and you learn how to talk like this. You learn how to talk. One is we believe, Gary, Gary believes that every client needs a fiduciary acting on their behalf. Now we wanna say how we do that, but we don't wanna use the word fiduciary because most of them, unless they're attorneys, don't know what that means, right? So we just, we just say, by the way, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I wanna remind you, I am licensed by the state of Nevada to represent you in the sale of your home. And I will always place your interest above the interests of any other party, including my own. And it's my commitment to get you the highest price in the shortest time with a minimum of inconvenience to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what sets you apart. Other agents won't even talk like this. See, they won't, but this sets you apart. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I just wanna remind you that I am licensed by the state of Nevada to represent you, not to represent buyers and sellers in a generic way. No, no, to represent you in the sale of your home. And I, that means, now we tell them what it means. I will always place your interests above the interests of any other party, who, oh, by the way, including my own. And I'm committed, we give them the triple, I'm committed to get you the highest price in the shortest time with a minimum of inconvenience to you. So fiduciary, big deal. Now, Linda McKissick said, Dave, you have to learn how to state the obvious in emotionally powerful ways. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? You mean the obvious? And she said, well, here's what I say to my sellers. Mr. and Mrs. Sellers, when you, seller, when you hire me to handle the sale of your home, I will immediately, tomorrow morning, notify all the other realtors in the area that one, your home is on the market, two, its best features, and three, why they should bring their qualified buyers to see it. Would you like me to do that? Oh, Linda, yeah. Would you do all that for us? Thank you. Thank you. So a mediocre agent is going to say, yeah, well, you know, we'll put it in the MLS and then we'll put a sign in the yard, you know, no, not a powerful agent. You're taking credit. We have, as, an, as a profession, we have built the MLS as a way to facilitate the buying and selling of homes that benefits both the buyers and the sellers. And we have accurate information and we have rules and regulations and guarantees with each other, integrity, all that sort of thing. So we wanna take credit for that, but there's things that we cause to happen on their behalf and we wanna take personal credit for that. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when you hire me to handle the sale of your home, I will immediately, sense of urgency, not tomorrow morning, notify all the other realtors in the area, one, that your home is on the market, two, its best features, in other words, I'm gonna promote it, and three, why they should bring their qualified buyers to see it. When you work with me, you get qualified buyers. That's the point, take credit for that. Now, here's another obvious thing. This one I learned from Althea Osborne, Gary's number one agent in, in Austin, not only Keller Williams number one agent, the number one agent in all of Austin from all companies for many, many years. She's still a great agent, by the way. And uh, so she had an interesting technique and I wanna share this technique with you. It's really, it's really powerful. So she would notice these new companies opening up in the area, particularly technology companies. And she'd find out the owner's name and then she'd knock on the door or, and, 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 and say, hey, Jim, 
uh, I'm, I'm Althea Osborne with Keller Williams. And by the way, I see this new company you're building. I am excited about what you're accomplishing here. And I'd like to be uh, on your uh, recruiting team. I go, what do you mean my recruiting team, Althea? And she'd go, oh no, I know you're trying to get people to move here from other parts of the country that are technologists and programmers and people that you need. So when you bring them in for an interview, I'll give them an area tour. I'll help them see why this is such a great area to live. I'll have them talk with other people or see what interests they are and how they could get those taken care of here, she said. And um, you know, if you decide to hire them and they move here, I'll even help them find a home. Isn't that interesting? I'll even help them find a home. That was the back end. The front end is I wanna help you recruit, which is what they needed, of course. And she did, she became part of, of the recruiting team of many uh, companies, they would, they would have her do the area tours. And then afterwards, they'd say, well, Althea, what do you think? What do you think? Are they, do they seem like a good candidate? What did they have to say when they were in the car with you? Right. And so she would help. And then, of course, when they did hire them, she would help them find a home. And then they would, you know, sell that home and list with her. And then, you know, and pretty soon she said, I'm up now and I'm selling million dollar properties. And every one of them, she said, asked me, Althea, where are you going to advertise it? And I have to educate you them. So Althea, where are you going to advertise our property? Where are you going to advertise our home? Hey, Althea, where are you going to advertise our home? Well, Jim, let me educate you on how real estate really works. See, ads don't sell homes. Realtors do. And I'm already investing half of my commission as an incentive for the best agents to bring their qualified buyers to your home. And as your agent, I will never waste your money. And I certainly wouldn't waste my own. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a, that is such a powerful, well, Dave, she's just talking about co-broking. Of course, but see, the obvious is the obvious, but guess what? There were times in the real estate industry when I first began where brokers didn't co-broke, not all of them. They would keep the listing to themselves and the only way you could get it was through them. So as an industry, we, we've matured to build an MLS and a lot of exchange of information uh, and also co-broking -bro co and doing it in open, honest, disclosed ways. And so, but we still remember that commission for the sale of their home, you've earned it. And if you decide to co-broke, you've decide, but that's the benefit to them. And it's also a way for them to understand how real estate works. Ads do not sell homes. They don't. Ads get more buyers and sellers. That's why people advertise, but that doesn't sell homes. So that's what we, that, so she'd say, that's what I'd say. Jim, let me educate you about how real estate really works. She's being assertive. Ads don't sell homes, realtors do. And I'm already investing half of my commission as an incentive for the best agents to bring their qualified buyers to your home. And then here's the kicker. As your agent, I will never waste your money. And I certainly wouldn't waste my own. <laughs> so whether they think that commission is their money or your money, you're not gonna waste it. Powerful, powerful. Now, the other thing is it's important to, to, to sell the benefits of who you're there with, right? I remember in the old days, uh, Debbie remembers this. People would say, well, I'd love to list with you, but I've never heard of this company or with this Keller, Keller, what? Oh yeah, Keller Williams. Let me tell you about Keller Williams. Keller Williams is the newest, most innovative, fastest growing real estate company in America and right here in Nevada. You go, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, now it's of course, look, we're 40% larger than any other real estate company in the world because we're the best. And so now we say, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, seller, let me tell you about Keller Williams. Keller Williams is the largest, most innovative and highly respected real estate company in the world. And then you put the personal touch. And I'm with Keller Williams because at Keller Williams, I am a partner in the business. I get to share in the profits. I have a say in all the decisions. And more important than that, I am empowered to do whatever it takes to best serve you. See, that is so powerful in Keller Williams. We treat our agents as partners. We empower them. We, they, do, they can share in profits if they choose to, profit sharing, and have a say through the ALC in all decisions. But most important, our agents are free within ethics and the law to do whatever they want to best take care of their agent, their, their, their consumers. So that we say that. And I'm with Keller Williams because at Keller Williams, I'm a partner in the business. I get to share in the profits. I have a say in all the decisions. And more important than that, I am empowered to do whatever it takes 
to best serve you. Now pricing, just write down chapter seven and eight, chapter seven and eight of the book Shift. It's all about pricing and staging. So well written, so many, so many uh, scripts and dialogues, so much research in there about how to price it, how to stage it. It's so good. So I'm just gonna highlight it. Here's the thing I wanna tell you is, on pricing, you're always on their side. You're always on their side. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, my job is to get you the highest price for your home. I am committed to that and I will get that done. Okay, that's what you So while we need to get 900,000 Dave for it, well, I'm committed to that. I'm committed to get you the highest possible prices I can for your home. Now, by the way, what you and I both are dealing with is the market will determine what your home sells for, the current buyers that are here. So remember, there's two kinds of markets out there. There's homes that are on the market, they're overpriced and they're, they don't look very good and they're only getting a few showings and no offers. Then there's homes that are in the market and they're priced right and they're, they look good and they're getting not only offers, they're getting multiple offers. So my job as your agent is not just to list your home and put it on the market. My job is to make sure that we are in the market because we wanna take advantage of this window of opportunity. A lot of people don't understand this, that when we first put your home on the market, we get all the attention of cur the current agents and current buyers to your home. If we make a bad first impression, we're cooked. If we're overpriced or we need repairs and don't look very good, they'll turn their back on us. We'll have a bad reputation. They won't be back. So we have to hit the market right to make a good first impression. And when we do, we'll get our best price and we'll get it right within the first 10 days to two weeks. And we may get multiple offers. That's what will give us our best price. So my job is to get you the highest possible price and take advantage of that window of opportunity. Does that make sense? Good. Let's look at the numbers. And by the way, I would never give a price ahead of time. I would never. No, say, they say, well, Dave, what, do you, what, would, what are you going to list it for? And I go, I don't know. We'll decide on that together. That's a, that's a mutual decision we will make based on the research and our analysis of it and what the current market conditions are. But I can't tell you ahead of time what, you know, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be honest to you. A lot of agents, well, Dave, somebody said they could get us, you know, a million too. And you go, agents can say anything. Agents can say they can get stuff, but they're not going to determine what your home will sell for. The market will determine. And I want to build the smartest strategy for you to make sure that you get the highest possible price. And that's part of the service that I, that I bring to you once we've decided to have me handle the sale of your home. So pricing is part of your strategy. It's not, it, this is not a bidding war and make fun of anyone who says it is, I mean, not make fun of them, but make fun of an agent who says they can get more money for it because you know, that's ridiculous. Now, final thing, commission, commission. So Dave, would you cut your commission? And I go, I, I respect you for asking that question. I know you want to get the best deal possible for your family. So I respect that. And by the way, you know, there's some days I love this business so much, I do it for free. But I don't think that would be good for my family. So let me take a minute to talk about commissions. Many people don't understand what happens to the commission. So let me explain. Half of it, 3% in general, goes to the company or agent that brings us the qualified buyer. So in a sense, that's not a commission. That's more of a marketing fee. Of the remaining 3% or approximately one third of it, 1% goes to my company number one in the world. Another third of it covers my business expenses, my technology, uh, my marketing, my staffing. And so only one third of it, about 1% of the whole commission goes to me and my family. And I know it would be very wrong for me to cut that. Does that make sense? Are we okay? Good. Let's get going, right? Now, I never, never apologize for your commission because it is always negotiable. And in general, in the industry, it averages about 5.6% but it, it's variable, it's always negotiable. There's no standardization, there's no price fixing. It's never been that way. It's always free. Um, and we get to pick what, what that commission is, but never be embarrassed by it because we have gone to the expense of setting an MLS up with co-broking, having businesses, having brokerages with real brokers there that protect the interest of the consumer. We are a highly regulated industry. All of that is expensive, costs money, but also, assures the, the consumer what they get. So the price that we, the commission that we charge is a, is a fair price, no question, never apologize for it. Number two is some agents just 
attack it and go, you know, go higher. That I know, I know a really good agent in San Antonio that says, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I just want you to know before we begin that I charge 1% more than the other agents in the area. Most of them charge five or six, I charge seven because I know with my experience, I'm gonna get you more money for your home. And so I charge 7%, is that okay? Oh, sure, sure, Mary, whatever you think. We're good, let's just go. So be, be very positive and, and confident about what you charge, all right? So. One, one, one final thing I wanna talk about, one final presentation. I wanna remind you that if you send me an email, dave at kw.com, dave, D-A-V-E at kw.com, give me three ahas from this presentation, just three, right? Any ahas, I, 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 that gives me feedback and it also is a way for you to crystallize what you're getting out of this. So it, it works both ways. Send me three ahas, to dave at kw.com and I will within a day send you all these slides plus Dave's favorite scripts includes a lot of scripts we didn't cover here, uh, the assertiveness bill of rights uh, and the Rudyard Kipling poem, okay? We'll send you all that. Uh, so dave at kw.com. Now let me just finish with this, it's important. This is the most important sales presentation you'll ever make, I promise you it is. It's the power of self-talk. How we talk to ourselves matters. And we need to be very powerful in our selling to ourselves. We need to say, I am in a skill-based sales profession. This is not easy. Not many people do it well. But I am mastering the knowledge and the skills. I have the attitudes that make me successful in this challenging business. And I practice hard, long, and often. I'm like a professional athlete or a professional actress, actress, or performer. I practice this game, particularly my presentation. I work my scripts and dialogues, I work at this. And therefore I'm becoming more competent. And as I become more competent, I'm increasing my confidence. I'm feeling stronger about my, my work as a salesperson uh, and as a service provider and as a professional and a lister. And therefore other people are feeling my positive energy and they wanna work with me and they refer people to me and I'm taking a lot of listings and a, those listings are selling and I'm getting signs up and I'm doing just listed, just sold cards around and I'm building a reputation and more and more people are calling to list with me and I am controlling my career and I'm doing what Gary Keller says to do. I'm thinking big, I'm aiming high and I'm acting bold. All right, Patty, Patty. That was fabulous. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you oh, so you're much. You're welcome. So let's, let's open it up. Any, uh, any uh, questions that people have? This is, or, uh, or bring it, uh, you know, any ahas? This is the time to do that. And it says, can we get a copy of the slides? Yep, just send to dave at kw.com. By the way, you know, that Cassie has, and we have recorded the session so you can go back and listen to it. And I highly recommend, a lot of people have said, Dave, you know, what I not only like is the scripts, but I like your way of delivering them. And I like those little questions you ask everywhere, like, you're ready to go? Are you ready to get started? You know, that kind of thing. And they said, I wanna get the feel for how this is presented. And then also kind of that tone of voice and the way you add those things in. So I would just highly recommend one of the things that Gary and I have been real advocates for uh, in, in the real estate training game is spaced repetition, going to the same training more times. Linda McKissick said, Dave, I've been to career visioning 12 times. And every time I go, I learn something more. So it's interesting that our, our highest, most successful agents go to masterminding or training more often than others. And a lot of what is covered is repetitious. They've heard it before. Many of you on this call have heard these things before. Many of you who've been with the scripts training that I've done in the market center have said, oh, Dave, yeah, I remember these scripts. I remember doing that. Yeah, standing up and going through the motions and do, doing all that stuff. But you know, this is a good reminder. So for many of us, when we get exposed to the same thing again, we are reminded of its strength, maybe we then implement it more than we did before. Uh, and certainly we, we, we understand it better than we did before. So, yeah. Any questions, either, you know, chat them in or, or un unmute yourself and ask. Hey, Robin. Hey. 
Hi, Dave. It's Robin. Hi, Robin. How are you doing, Robin? Good to see you. You're looking wonderful. Thank you. Doing doing great. Doing great. You know, yeah. um, I did have something. I just, if, if you could just take a moment, I was visualizing it when you were putting it together and I was writing it um, so that I could get it, but I didn't get the entire part about okay. when you were talking about setting the stage. Yes. Um, the, the safe island and how you did it and how you started out with B4 and then the next one was the, um, you know, before we, and then you begin, went into, before we begin, then the may, I yep, may I take a minute, yeah, may I take a minute to tell you how I work, right, and so I know, and by the way, I will repeat it, I will repeat it, because there was a couple of little scripts I popped in there that aren't, that, you know, that weren't on the screen, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell, I'll say those in a second, but also, I want you to know in Dave's favorite scripts, when I send that to you, all, all that little detail is there. Okay. If all of That's the great. detail of the, self island, the safe island is there, including, you know, I'm going to ask you a series of questions so I can get a clear picture of what you want to accomplish and how I can help. I'm going to give you enough market information to make a rational decision <laughs> about the price to place on the property. All of those are in that scripts and dialogues of uh, Dave's favorite that I'm going to send. So, Perfect. you know. Send me, send me your three ahas, Robin. Hi, Dave. Gonna, I want to hear your ahas anyway. <laughs> I just want to see what stood out. By the way, that's an interesting feedback for me. It always is. And make any other comment you want about, about the class. But, but when I see what pe what's really connecting with people, it gives me an idea of what the most important things are, right? So I'm not judging them. I'm using it as feedback. And the other thing is Gary and I both agreed that part of our educational strategy is we think ahas are actually more important than questions. So when you ask a question, it, mean, it means sort of there's more information I need before I can take action. But an aha says, I got it, I can go implement this, right? So ahas, we, we are big believers in the power of ahas. So I'm, I'm, one of the reasons I'm asking you to send me three is for you. So you identify three things that stood out for you. Yeah. Hi, Dave. Can hi, you, hi. Who's, who's, who's talking? Denise. Hi, Denise. How are you? I am doing could good. You talk, could you talk a little bit about your pre-listing package? I don't believe in pre-listing packages. Oh. No, I don't. I mean, I just believe you show up and you do the presentation and you list with them. See, the more you send them information ahead of time or the more you leave information, the more you give them reasons to say no. Um, you know, oh, I didn't like that. Oh, you know, that wasn't really, that's not the way I'd say it, you know. So to me, the thing is that what you want to do is lock down the fact that you have the presentation and you give them some benefits, Mr. And Mrs. So let me tell you what we will do at this presentation. I'll, I'll answer all your questions, number one, is I'm going to tell you why I get better results than other agents do. And I'll give you a sense of how I work so you can know whether you want me to handle the sale or not. I'll get all of that done when we're together. Uh, is tomorrow night a good time? Good, will you both be able to be there? Wonderful, anything else I should know before I show up? Great. I see. So I, think people, you... I think people do, I would just tell you, this is my own experience, so you, other people may teach you other things, but I think people put too much work into ancillary things that mm -hmm. aren't the heart of people deciding to list with you. And yet they feel like they're right, right? They feel like that's right. It's like people love to do social media marketing because it feels like they're marketing, but they sort of aren't. They're playing, <laughs> they're, they're playing at marketing. What okay. real marketing is, and I'm going to, this is another seminar I do, but I'll just, I'll leave it. Remember this about real estate. Real estate is a local business, always has been. The properties are local. The regulations are local. The procedures are local. All, everything is local. Uh, and it's all built on relationship, reputation, and trust. Relationship, mm -hmm. reputation, and trust. People list with people they know. People list with people they trust. People list with people they've been referred to. So the mm -hmm. whole game, and we say it in MREA so clearly, you're, you know, your business is your database. So the more people who you put in your database, who when they think of real estate, think of you, and the more you're getting 33 touch messages out to them about what's going on in the market. Those are the people that are going to either do business with you or refer business to you. And all That's the other great. stuff is generic. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Was that helpful, Denise? 
Yes, very. Okay, good. Yeah. And I think it's, a, it's the same thing about people really. I mean, I remember when I listed a, a home back in Dallas, I was moving to be with Keller Williams uh, in Austin. And I had two or three agents and two of them uh, had these long uh, you know, presentations. They had uh, binders, they had stuff like that. And the one I listed with was just conversational. But she was so credible. She was so strong. She knew the market. She was confident. She answered all my questions. She didn't try and dump me with information. She said, what do you need to know? You know, and, and that's who I listed with. So I would really have this, this listing presentation come down more to relationship and assertiveness. Certainly assert what you can do. You're a master of contracts. You're a master of property evaluation. You'll answer all their questions. You know, you're a fiduciary. That's why I tried to give you all the kind of little pieces that I think matter to people the most. Okay. Um, can I ask you, maybe it was my, um, I'm, I'm not sure if I misunderstood, sure. but on the comp and getting the pricing for the house. Yes. Um, you secure the listing and save the pricing for the house as a yeah, benefit. Yeah, because because that's not that's not that's part of your service. That's like saying, okay, okay. tell me all the things you're going to do to market it. Tell me exactly what you're going to do, where you're going to advertise it, what's your marketing mm -hmm. budget, what's a, you know, uh, what are we what are we going to you know price it for? When are we going to and to go? Wait, that's all part of what my service is. That's what I do with you. I am your <laughs> fiduciary. I'm the one who helps you make those decisions. Right. I, I, I don't know how anyone would do that ahead of time. That's that's what I do. Mm -hmm. OK, so I think there's a lot of what one is there's some misunderstanding that somehow you can come in and with your crystal ball, you know, sort mm -hmm. of invent a price. And I think a lot of agents use that and they use that unethically. They say, oh yeah, we can get you a million two. I'd say your house is gorgeous. This is great. The market's hot, million two. And then they know in their mind they're gonna get maybe 900,000, but that they'll, you know, they'll, once the information is there, once they have the listing, they'll talk the person to a lower price. Well, they'll say, I guess we're just getting feedback from the marketplace. You know, to me, your home is worth more, but we're getting feedback from the marketplace that probably we better, better get it down near closer to 900,000. And mm -hmm. so I would even describe that to people if, if they really feel somehow that another agent has told them they can get a lot more money and you say, look, here's the one thing I will tell you. I promise you this. I will get you the highest price you can possibly get for your property. I promise you that. That's my commitment. Okay. And I will do that because I know how to do that. And I know that together we will, you'll have great confidence in the way we price your home. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You bet. You bet. Be good. Anything else? We good? Good stuff. Send Dave your ahas yeah. where to translate that, your three key takeaways from the presentation to get the slides, have all that material in your hand so you can reference it again and use it to your advantage. Yep, and the and the Dave's favorite scripts, which is a whole oh, bunch more that right. weren't here, right, right? Uh, and uh, the assertiveness Dave. bill of rights for yeah. some people that, that wanna get a little more assertive in their life, <laughs> not aggressive, not aggressive, but assertive in their life, then yeah. Big and difference. That, yeah. And then the poem. And then the bonus is the Rudyard yeah. Kipling poem, right? And send that to Dave at kw.com. There we go. Dave, thank you so much. It's been right, an absolute everyone. pleasure. I love Rock it when you Patty, good teach. to see you. Debbie, good to see you. Robin, you, good to see you. you. Everybody. Thank you. Take care. Yep. Thanks again, Dave. All right. Thank you so thank much. You. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.